Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Let's get into one example. Imagine a scenario where you have a chatbot, which is powered purely by an API call to OpenAI to interact with your customer. The customer come in and says hi, and then ask, are you shipping this merchandise internationally? The chatbot might reply with a simple, confident, yes, we do ship internationally. But here's the twist. If your business actually doesn't ship overseas, this incorrect response could lead to confusion and frustration. This issue happens because without proper customization or prompt engineer, chatbots can sometimes hallucinate, generating incorrect answers. So how do we tackle this? Today, I'll show you how to mitigate this problem using a technique called Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. We'll be integrating a pre-prepared file, a sort of script that holds the most up-to-date and accurate information about your shipping policies. When a customer asks a specific question related to shipping policy, our system will retrieve and utilize that accurate information. I'll be demonstrating this process using DeepSeq R1 and Llama with Olama as a tool for running models locally. I'll walk you through how to set up your prompts, integrate Rack, and ultimately ensure that your chatbot stay on track, avoiding those hallucinations. Let's get into it. Let's get started by activating the virtual environment, which is the best practice. If you don't know how to implement the virtual environment, check out my previous video. So for now, I already created my virtual environment, which is called Rack. So I will be doing actually, let's see where I'm at. I'm at, all right, I have to CD into my folder. And then now we're gonna do sort Rack bean activate to activate our virtual environment how do we know it already activate you can see it here this is after this is before so rack is already there and then you know another bad practice to have a requirement.txt file here with all the packages that you need to be installed let's do it very quickly pip install r requirement.txt to get everything. So it's run quite fast because I already installed everything. Alrighty, now let's get into the T. So um, this is my backend. I don't have a front end yet on this tutorial. Let's just work on the backend. And then the next tutorial, we are going to see front end and back end. So for this back end, first we import all of the libraries that we need to use for this script. Um, this one though, this is to load all the variable from the uh, .env file, which is all the API that I need for, let's say, hugging phase, uh, you know, open AI. In this case, I do need open AI KPI, API. That's why I have it here. All right, import all of these various libraries and they are like a specific function. We need this lane chain Oyama because we're going to use Olama. Also, don't forget to turn on your Olama here because we are going to use Olama locally. If you don't know how to run Olama locally, check out my previous video. All right, now that we have already environment set up, let's load the KPI, the API. So load environment here because I already have all of my API storing in this .env. Now I'm just gonna retrieve it. I have Hugging Face Token and I have Open AI, Open AI API key here. If you don't know how to get Open API key, I do have one tutorial, you know, in the detail how to go to Open AI and then retrieve the Open a API key. All right. So for this part, we are going to test DeepSeq R1. So this is how first you locally pull the model called DeepSeq R1 to Olama LLM. And then this model will be later using for our chain. This is how you're going to, going to do it. And remember, this is our model. Now is a document procession function. This one is important. 
Let's take a look at our document. So this is can consider like the script for our chatbot. This is the question and answer the question that I want to chatbot whenever user ask these question, these are going to be the answer that I am expected to see. For example, first question, what size do you carry? The answer, we carry a range of size from XS to XXL, some style include additional size. And then the next question, for example, can I track my order? Can I exchange an item for different size? How do we know that that item is in stock? Can I pre-order upcoming items? So for all of the questions, as you can see, without the knowledge, without the you know external knowledge up to date, the chatbot will not be able to answer this question. For example, like what are your return policy? If we don't have the script like this for the bot, it may just like you know come up with some fake day or fake information because it's try to like come up with an answer instead of saying sorry I don't know. Um so then for this this is like a script we want the chatbot to retrieve the answer from here. All right. So that being said, this is the document to process um, the document because again, we are getting this document for the chatbot to retrieve to get all the information and it's a form of text. Now we have to change it to like different, like a character by doing first we split the document into smaller text and then after that we ready for embedding and then indexing the embedding again turn all the text into numerical value where those value can be understand um, using the large language model now let's go line by line to see what's the function doing again we have a function docs pre-processing helper to be able to get the CSV file and then chunk it into smaller text and then embedding for the model to understand. All right, so let's go back line by line. First, we load the file. We assign that loader to a file, to like a variable named docs. And then we use these character text split and we split it to a junk site with 1000 up to 1000 characters. This is um, so we with no overlapping text between junk. And then docs again using this variable and then use this function text splitter to split the document. What document, which is our docs, which is our CSV file, which is our survey. And then now let's return that variable, which is a documents. So then, you know, assign that CSV file into a helper function and store it in docs. All right, so now what is the form of this docs? This docs now is a junk site. A junk can go up to 1000 characters. Now, what are we gonna do with this? With this, are our models be able to understand? No, not yet, because although we split it into like different small chunk size, it's still in the form of text. Now we need to transform text to number so the model will be able to understand. How do we do it? So we are going to use an embedding, embedding function from OpenAI. This is like so many embedding models that you can use. In this case, I'll be just using OpenAI embeddings. This converts text into numerical vectors. Again, why we need to do this? Because the model need to have the numerical vectors to be able to understand what's going on in that survey CSV file. So OpenAI embedding, OpenAI API key. This is the OpenAI API key right here that we, you know, assigned from the very beginning. Okay. So then we have a OpenAI embedding wrap it here into the embedding function call the embedding function under chroma what is this is this like a database where we will be storing all of the embedding um document different chunks so the model will be able to 
used to retrieve the most relevant document based on the query. So, what is in DB here? It's like a form of what is it? Numerical vectors. So the model can be query form. This is the important part for this tutorial. Define the prompt template. We want to instruct the chatbot on how to answer customer queries. And then we want to also make sure it's include the context information, how to use only the data provided. So here's a template. You are a clothing consultant chatbot. This is a little bit of like role play, right? So we give a chatbot a role, a specific role where it's going to be doing. And then next we will giving some goal and then the context, which is, you know, very important for prompt design to let the chatbot help us to be specific in a role and, you know, to be good at what they are doing. So. The context and the goal is to answer a customer question only using the source data provided, which is the survey CSV. And I also say, please answer to this specific question. And I also say, if you're unsure, say, I don't know, please call our customer support. And then I also say, keep your answers concise. So with all of this, which is we are telling the bot, whenever a customer answers, please use only the document provided, which is the surveys. That survey is now is our DB, right? Because we already embedded everything into this DB, which is like a chroma dat database for us to query all the information later. And then after that, you know, answer the question precisely. If there's something, some information you don't know, just say, I don't know. After we have that prompt, now we create a prompt template object from the link chain to, you know, get ready for the chain later using rack. So then we have that format. We wrap that format into a prompt with a context. A customer is on the clothing company website and they want to chat with the website chatbot. They will ask you a question. Please answer to this specific question. So then now it has a very clear picture. It know its role, it know the goal, and it know what context, what is going on, and how to you know react to that context. So far we had the vector DB, we have the prompt. Now let's create the retrieve QA question answer chain. This retrieve Q8 is from LangChain to combine the language model to generate a response, which is in our case is a local DeepSeq R1, and then a retriever, which is a function DB dot as retriever to fetch the relevant document based on the query. And again, the DB will already pre-processing and then embedding. So this is like, a uh, numerical vector store in this db and this db as retriever is to get the relevant document to answer the question from users a prompt that we already designed role goal context to provide an instruction on how to answer the query so we have the chain type keyword argument which is our prompt our custom prompt we design above to the chain inside the chain let's see what we have here we have retrieval qa which is from lane chain and then we have from chain type what is our lm here the model what is the model model is something here we already predefined this is olama lm model deep seek r1 so that model will be passing right here chain type equal to stop what is the stop means? It means it combines all the retrieved documents into one context. Retriever is equal to db.sretriever, which is fetch the relevant document based on the query. Short, que uh, short keyword argument k is equal to 1 to retrieve the top relevant document chunk. And then chain type is equal to the custom prompt that we have. So we had 
the database, we have the prompt, we have the chain. Now let's query the chain and see the output. Here's the query. Query is basically a customer question. So we're asking, what size do you carry? According to our surveys, if we look at it, what size do you carry? We will expect to see we carry a range sizes from, you know, extra small to extra large. Some style include additional size. So we will, I mean, we expect to see that answers from the chatbot and then respond here just basically using chain dot run, run what, run this query. And then from that query, retrieve the most relevant answer from this context, from this prompt. And then we just print out the response. Now let's see what is the answer from um, our DeepSeek R1. I will run Python 3 um, with this name, file name, backend, oops, backend.py. And then we will see what is the answer we have from DeepSeek R1. All right, so this is an answer. The query, what size do you carry? Let me zoom this a little bit more so we can see. This is the answer. We carry size from very extra small, so extra, extra large. And some styles include additional size for extra fit options. I think this is exactly the answer that we want. And this is like a thought process from deep, deep seek you can see a little um think note here so yeah all right this is such a good answers now i do really want to try llama to see if i can get the same sort of answer i'm a 3.1 all right let's do i wanted to do with model Another one, model Olama 3.1. Let's see if we get the same result. Let me run it again. All right, we have a diverse size range that cater from various needs. Our standard size are small, extra small to extra large, with certain item offering more options. Okay, so the answer is like tailored to the chatbot, right? Make it more like a natural, natural conversation. But the core is still there. This is our core, right? Our standard size, the information is there. So Llama also passed the spot check in this case. Um, just a side note, this is basically my prompt is, um, let me show you my prompt again. Please uh, only using the source data provided. So which mean that whatever question that you ask they will first trying to they will try to query from the surveys.csv you know this is like all the information that they have so i try to narrow down into all of this information but in practice you may don't want to do it you want to have a kind of like hybrid setting so you want to have you know this file where when it's come to like information from your business and then you will also want it to have the setup where customer just say like, hi, how are you today? So the chatbot will be able to say, I'm fine. How about yourself? Instead of like retrieving the answer, we carrying a range size from like small to large, right? So it depends on your business need, but the setup can be, you know, just tailored specific to your script be a general, no prompt, with prompt or a hybrid setting. Next time, we will look at this again, but with a front end to see how it's really form a custom chatbot. See y'all later.